I think the big thing too is the same way, you know, IAN teaches us that there is no one diet that works for everyone. There is no business plan that works for anyone. And we are sold that, oh, it's this or do this or that. But really, it's going to depend on who your clients are. What specific niche are you in? And, you know, I tell the people who come to my certification, 50% of what is going to make your own methodology unique is your own background. So you don't even have to try with that. It's, it's what path have you been on? People want to know that they're safe in your care and people who've gone through similar things are safe spaces for people who are struggling. Welcome to another episode of the Health Coach Academy podcast. I'm your host, Omar Cumberbatch from OmarCumberbatch.com. As always, appreciate you jumping in and joining in and listening to all the good and new in the health coach space. And today's guest is Ali Shapiro. And Ali is crushing it. And I kind of want to be like Ali to a super duper degree because her business model is something that I really really relate to um i'm not there yet but you know as always when we have guests like ali they can inspire you to do things that you haven't done before and really put a perspective on the health coaching space so i'm really excited to share her with the audience she also has an amazing story that she shared briefly on this podcast but over on this podcast burns fat me and dr shemek had her just talk about this health and stuff like she's really just somebody who i want you to check out on that episode as well as always please leave a rating and review so i can continuously get great guests like ali shapiro on the show and if you know anybody who is interested in learning more about the podcast creation course that i created just send them over to the website and you know be get them signed up to have a discovery call and yeah we get that rocking and rolling so really excited about that and this continued success so let's jump into the show hey ali how are you today welcome to the show thank you so much for having me omar (laughs) i think we're gonna have a good time based on the (laughs) pre-chat yeah no that's one thing about podcasting the pre-chat is sometimes better than the actual (laughs) episodes but you know i I, i'm sure you're gonna deliver because you have a lot going on i really excited to have you (laughs) Well, thank you so much for having me. All right. Well, tell us a little bit about your journey, just of how you became a nutritionist slash health coach. What, where did you go to school? What really inspired you to take on this journey that is needed so much in this world? Yeah. Well, like you, I went to IIN and I went to it not thinking I would become a health coach or anything, but just really having... Um, what I thought at the time was I thought my biggest issue was emotional eating and my obsession with my weight. And when I went to IIN, you know, we learn all the different dietary theories and I was really attracted to functional medicine. And what I learned there, and this was, I went in 2006. What year did you go to IIN? I think it was 2013. So you, okay. you were one of the actual people who went to a class? Yeah, I went to a class in New York City. Yeah, I lived in Philly. I would take the bus up, you know, because um, I had a corporate job during the day. And I really, you know, at that point, I guess we, we all start this. I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, and what functional medicine taught me at the time, I was struggling with IBS, um, at, Ac- um, acne that I had tried to use Accutane and antibiotics to resolve. I was really struggling with depression. And what IIN and functional medicine helped me realize was that I had a lot of gut issues. And my gut issues stemmed from having cancer as a teenager and the chemotherapy. And this was remarkable to me that I was able to resolve all of that. And I was like, how me who's like binging at night and, you know, originally and feels like my body has all these issues. How was I able to resolve this? And my doctors don't know about this. And this was just very um, startling to me, but also exciting. Um, So I started seeing clients on the side because I thought, well, This worked for me. I'm not sure if it's going to work for everybody else. And back then, I mean, this is, I think, hard for people listening today, maybe to understand there was no social media, even a lot of um, 
newspapers didn't have health sections, right? Like this was like a very different era. It was almost 20 years ago. I feel like I'm dating myself, but so I would give grocery store tours and teach people about quinoa and kale. And then I would find that I, two things were happening is I didn't know we would stop talking about food after about the fourth session. Um, and I didn't know why certain things were working, certain things weren't. And then I would find my old emotional eating coming back when I started having doubts about myself as a health coach. Like, can I help these people? Oh my God, the tools I used are not working now. Um, or whenever I would go for my scans, um, as cancer survivors, we tend to call when you go for your checkups to make sure that your cancer hasn't returned, or in my case, um, that no secondary cancers um, had occurred as a result of the radiation that I had to my chest. Um, we call it skin anxiety season. Mm -hmm. And I would binge on sugar um, while I was, you know, scheduling the MRIs, getting the MRIs, waiting for the MRI, MRI results. And then also I was still in my corporate job and I was bored, but like overwhelmed by it. I don't know if, if you know what I mean. Like this, what is going on here? Um, and so I was like, why? I know how amazing I feel when I look at nutrition through this medical lens, but why can't I keep it up? And I use that same functional medicine thought process, which is root cause resolution, um, holistic, integrated to think, what if falling off track, falling off the wagon is a symptom as well? And I think you, I'm sure you're aware of, I mean, everyone in our industry knows this falling off the wagon is a huge issue, starting, stopping, starting, stopping. Um, and so I went back to grad school to figure out what was really working in my client sessions, what wasn't, um, and why was I someone who had all the motivation in the world as a cancer survivor and was really driven, really disciplined, what was my issue of why I couldn't maintain what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do during stressful periods. Mm -hmm. And I really realized that the root cause of why a lot of us turn to food is that food is about safety. Um, it's the first when we're born, it's the way we know that we survive, right? It's really uncomfortable to be uh, hungry and you cry and then your caregiver uh, gives you food and you really only need touch and food. <laughs> for the, the first several years. Um, and then you also learn that you belong. Um, someone wants to choose you and care for you if you're fed, right? Mm -hmm. um, so our earliest relationships with food, um, both in terms of physical safety and emotional safety, really influence how we relate to food um, indefinitely and forever. So that's, I just gave you a lot, <laughs> but that's oh. uh, how my health coaching practice basically evolved to focus on like, how do we really change this falling off the wagon thing? Well, no, I'm, uh, that, that was a great and powerful story. I'm very excited to hear that you, cancer is eradicated and you move yeah. on. That's so very inspirational. And that, that's just a story in and of itself. So thank you for sharing that. So yeah. what's interesting is that you did take steps to continuously learn about your eventually your your philosophy of stuff. So tell us how you balanced learning just enough to comparatively some health coaches out there who never stop learning and keep chasing these shiny objects and new course certifications, uh, all these letters after their name, just so that they can feel like they're ready to step out in the world and actually start their business. So can you tell me how you were balancing that? And maybe what, what's at fault there and why we have such a difficult time with that? Yeah. Well, I think, first of all, I totally understand this impulse to want to get more training and tools. I think coaches more than any of us, our strength is our love of learning. Mm -hmm. And so we still want to do that. But I think there's a sequence over strategy, right? Like when is it strategic to go get more continuing education versus when do I just need more practice? And I think two things come up for us as health coaches, at least I can speak to in my own experience, and I have my own certification pro program, and this is what people come tell me is their issues as well, is one is I think there's a lot of uncertainty around the totality of how people change. So I think a lot of different trainings, whether it's like nervous system is hot right now, or EFT, or NLP, or cognitive, you know, positive psychology, all of these are one piece to the change puzzle, 
but they're tools. They're not the toolbox. And so if we don't know, when do I use this? When do I not? And is this actually going to work for the client? If we don't understand the totality of that change process, it can send us down a lot like rabbit holes forever. And so that's why I really work on people understanding what is the totality of the change process so that you know what, when to use what. Um, and uh, coupled with that, part of that uncertainty is also exasperated by health coaching is a relatively new field, right? I mean, we, it's, I mean, when I went to IAN, we were called health counselors. <laughs> we weren't even called health coaches yet. So it's like, when we look at that, and I think in all other fields, whether you have, um, whether you're a doctor, a dietitian, a lawyer, you have an internship period where you have someone. And we, I think these days, unfortunately, it was kind of bad when I started and it's really bad now. You have all these online marketers who can tell you, you know, oh, I'm gonna teach you how to go from zero to six figures overnight. And no one's spending time saying, I'm gonna help you mentor you to get great at your craft so that whenever you learn the tools and they don't go exactly as you learn <laughs> in your training, I'm gonna show you how to pivot um, and why this is working, why that's not. So I think, I, I'm sharing all that to say, I understand why people go down these rabbit holes. I don't think the infrastructure for what we actually need is is um, as omnipresent as we need it right now. So I think that answer is like why it, why we do it. Yeah, no, I think that's a, you brought up a, no, a number of good points, especially when you're talking in the context of coaching. Coaching is one thing. The business aspect is totally another thing. So I did definitely see because sometimes health coaches, like you said, aren't the, 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 we're not famous in our craft yet. We're not nutritionists. We're not dietitians. We have like this this carved out thing that our people aren't necessarily fully recognizing of it yet. So that might be a, a, an issue. Um, but speak to how you started. Like, did you have like this business acumen where you were able to just say, okay, I'm gonna not take on the business course particularly but maybe i'll take on something to gain more practice and knowledge in in my craft and did you have a balancing period during that point yeah well i love because i have a lot of health coaches since i've been at it 16 years come and ask me like all about health coaching and I'm like, mm -hmm. the question isn't if you want to be a health coach it's do you want to be in spiritual boot camp every day of your life <laughs> <laughs> uh, meaning like you're going to have to look at your own stuff as you build your business because um you know i have a pr i i did i had a corporate job before this and doing pr for yourself and marketing for yourself versus a business is completely different yeah. Um, so I think one of the things is I didn't have a business acumen. My parents were public school teachers, you know, no, and everyone in my extended family were nurses or, you know, people who had nine to five jobs. Um, and I think what, and I, so you do. I think the thing that you have to do in the beginning is put yourself out there, right? And, you know, there's there's kind of three stages of business. Like one is proof of concept, right? And as soon as you can sell one thing to one person, you have a proof of concept. And then the second stage is sales and marketing, where you're trying to, you're kind of growing up your product offering, it's maturing, and you're spending, you're going to spend a ton of time here of like, what messaging works? What, what, am, what am I doing that actually provides value? And that will evolve. Um, and we have to spend a lot of time there. But again, for me, I went to grad school because I needed mentors. I didn't, and I wanted to feel really good that what I was doing for clients could really provide the change that I wanted to be able to charge for, right? That I could really give the value that I could charge for. So it's, um, I think it's a dance of like, first practice, 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 right? And then it's like, okay, I have something here. What do people telling me that I'm helping them solve? All right, I go for that, you know? And then you start to listen. And I think one of the beautiful things about health coaching, at least how I coach is, I don't need to do focus groups. I don't need to even listen to social media. I'm hearing what what my clients are struggling with yeah. every day in the most intimate fashion. I don't have to bribe them with an Amazon gift card to yeah. take a survey, you know? And so starting there, I think sometimes we make it harder. It's like, 
I can help someone with this. This is my content versus, you know, I don't know. That's, I don't know. I'm kind of going, I'm offering a lot, but I think it's a dance of like really coaching for a couple of years and then working on marketing after that, because really the best marketing I have found is relationship marketing. Mm -hmm. It's your clients telling people all about you. It's developing relationships with like, I had um, had several clients tell their doctors about the results they were getting. So then the doctors were referring people to me. And I think that it's like word of mouth business is still the best business. And so that's why I really focus on the people who are in my own training is like, how do we get you the best at what you're doing so that marketing becomes a lot easier if you feel really, you know, confident in that, but you have to do kind of both at the same time. You're never going to completely feel like I got this. (laughs) So you, you did say you went to grad school. What did you go to grad school for? Yeah, great question. It's called uh, organizational dynamics, which is basically like the science of how adults change. Um, So a lot of people, it's a lot of executives who want to get more out of their team. Um, But what the OD tagline is like culture eats strategy for lunch. So all these companies want to implement these strategies, but ultimately you're working with a bunch of human beings. Um, So I took a lot of what I learned and applied it to the health coaching space and then realized there were also a lot of holes in coaching theory. So I studied all the coaching theories, but ironically, a lot of coaching theories don't even address the body, which is to me like, like essential to change because the body stores so much um, information (laughs) and resistance to change too. (laughs) Oh yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's for sure. Cause I I was just curious because you, you, do speak like you have the business aspect of it oh yeah i learned i i learned yeah but i and and i had to become i think the i mean i think the big thing too is the same way you know iin teaches us that there is no one diet that works for everyone Mm -hmm. there is no business plan that works for anyone and we are sold that oh it's this or do this or that but really it's going to depend on who your clients are What specific niche are you in? And, you know, I tell the people who come to my certification, 50% of what is going to make your own methodology unique is your own background. So you don't even have to try with that. It's, it's what path have you been on? People want to know that they're safe in your care and people who have gone through similar things are safe spaces for people who are struggling. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And you obviously, like we mentioned earlier, you have a great story and the relatability of just some, overcoming something like that is so powerful in a story that makes people want to listen to what you have to say. And they can absolutely relate either either in their own story or people that they know. And maybe they just want to prevent something like that from happening in the future for them. So it's like a really easy win for you and just what you've been through. Yeah, yeah. But everyone has, you know, I'll, I'll give you some examples. So like I said, I have my true coaching certification and it, it teaches people the toolbox of change. So you can become like a midwife with your clients rather than account, an accountability partner. And for anyone who doesn't know what a midwife is, they really trust the birth process and we're birthing change, right? So take me on a little metaphor versus, and again, I gave birth in a hospital, but I had a midwife there because the birth, because the hospital system, I call it cover your ass medicine. Like (laughs) you as birthing is this like inherently dangerous thing. So there's a lot of, you know, it's just a different mentality. Um, But so much of uh, those of us who are health coaches and healers, our own experience can really gives us these insights. So like um, one of my clients, she's a naturopath who is um, one wanting to get more into coaching because she's like, you can give people all this testing, but it won't really change their behavior. Sometimes it actually makes them more shame, like more in shame. And she is someone who's sober from alcohol. So after going through my certification program, she created this program called Swell that helps physically support people who are a couple years into their sobriety because getting sober from alcohol is hard enough. And then if you don't have the physical nutrients or your system's all out of whack, adrenal fatigue, cravings for alcohol come back so much more intensely. But that is her journey 
as someone who's sober and a naturopathic physician, like that's plus people are like, you get it, you get it. So I want to work with you, right? Because you know, the ins and outs. Another one of my clients, she has a ministry background um, and a therapy background, but she really wanted to work on self-care with female clergy who struggle. So she created a program with my truth framework. She brought in all her gifts and all her backgrounds and her community contacts and created this program called Restore that helps people, helps female clergy who really really want to take care of themselves, but are struggling to do it. But that's her gifts and her background. Like, I don't know that world. Um, and so I think people, because we've, we haven't gone to school, right. To, for our background of health experiences, like you overcome your stuff, right. It's like, I didn't get a degree, but I, I have the empathy. I have the insights, the tips, the, you know, a midwife knows when to move the position, you know, <laughs> right. um, and 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 lets the client, you know, the, the birthing person, the mama lead. So, and that's what coaching does, and it's just a very different approach than if you're trained in being a doctor or something like that. So, I think coaches, you know, um, need to realize that just because you didn't go to school for your background, it doesn't mean you don't have this rich experience and point of view that people can benefit from. Oh, yeah. And until recently, when I worked with a copywriter and they were asking me the what I thought were like the dumbest questions I've ever heard in my life. And and but it was it was so simple, like, oh, what did you do for your job when you were this age or this? And it was bringing together like a story of, wow, I've been through a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of stuff. I took a path. So it's, it's, it's almost interesting what, like how you're depicting it. We all have uh, like in our mundane lives, we, we really <laughs> created stories that are very powerful. <laughs> We've overcome a lot of things that we don't realize. And that's something that we could you know, ultimately package into programs that other people are very interested in, in figuring it out. So, you yeah, know, that, I think that was even interesting. I was just thinking of the, you know, the clergy, like, he's like, oh, I just go to church. What's the big right. deal? <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. But there's people that care for you that are struggling to care. But, and that's the point. Like, how would we know that? Because that's not our life experience. But you know your niche and you're like, you know. Um, and I think those of us who are health coaches, we tend to be the canaries in the coal mine. You know, it's like we're the early signals that. And it, it's amazing to me because if you have a lot of I have a lot of other friends who are coaches. You start to think everyone thinks this way or whatever. And then you go out, you know, again, I was just hanging out. I was telling you before the break with my high school friends. And it's like, no, like their idea of health is so different, you know, <laughs> or like even open to coaching. I, I mean, I don't know if any of them have used a coach or whatever, but it's like, to, it, it's not their thing. So it's like, it's so brand new to them. And like, you know, and a lot of the health issues we've all worked through or have learned to support ourselves in the, the general population is just starting to get online. And I think COVID accelerated mm -hmm. like, oh my God, immune system, metabolic health. These are words I see the mainstream media using, you know, that to me felt like they were like, you know, functional medicine seminars 10 years ago. <laughs> so right, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing. I'm glad you brought that up too. It's just like, we take for granted our knowledge base of things that like, okay, yeah, well, how, how do you, like, I, I find it amazing people still eat at McDonald's. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, and it's like, that's people do that. People still drink sodas. People still smoke. They, they do all these things that like are so, yeah years ago for us and then we don't realize that they are interested in the support so i wanted to ask you because you you do creep outside of your uh coach network what how ha has the reception been when you tell a person you know who's not in your circle what you do and well, what's their reception of the the idea of being coached yeah well i think i think what's most important for all of us is that like everyone basically cares what's in it for me Right. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I learned I don't need an elevator pitch. I just need to ask questions. So mm -hmm. if someone because I think showing people versus telling them is a better example. And I've actually told a lot of my um, my certification clients. They're like, well, how do I market this or whatever? You know, it's like, well, go out and coach in your in your workshop. Don't fill it with a bunch of content. 
you know, use some of the concepts you've learned here and show people what coaching is. Mm -hmm. So if someone, um, you know, I guess I, I wouldn't even like bring it bring it up. Like I remember one of my friends though, she listens to, she listened to my podcast. I did a 30th. So last year was my 30th cancer anniversary of being a cancer survivor. And I did a whole podcast on how um, the difference between expert and authority, because right now there's a lot of like distrust in experts, which is, you know, obviously I think um, it's a healthy skepticism, but there's a difference. I was going to say well-deserved. Yeah, well deserved. Well deserved. But I'm like, I always see experts as, but we also don't want to dismiss what they know at the same time. So I'm like, I just did this podcast episode about like authority ultimately rests with us. Like we have to decide and who's on our team, what experts are on our team. And I just think of experts as giving an opinion. But she texted me and she's like, I'm just so proud of like the work you're doing and like all that you know. And, and she was just like, I had no idea, you know? And I was like, well, cause it wasn't like in her what's in it for me yet. And so I think we can save a lot of time. And then also if you're telling people who aren't ready, who aren't interested, you start thinking no one cares. Right? It's like, mm-hmm. no one understands what I do. No one cares versus it's just not what they need right now. Um, and so I think when Pete, when we're out networking or we're out talking, it's always like, we don't need a bunch of content. Just start asking questions Mm -hmm. you know and it's like why is that hard for you you know oh and we can use our coaching skills to show people what we do and i think that's a lot more powerful absolutely so i i I can't believe how quickly this show yeah (laughs) Yeah, definitely a part two type of guest yeah (laughs) Uh, but i do want to ask you maybe can you give like a description real quick of like what your business model kind of looks like right yeah. now? And just, you know, because all of us obviously want to make money and we want to see. Oh yeah. And we should. Like <laughs> so, I think so, people who okay. give emotional support and coaching should be paid just as well as, you know, wall street. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't think anyone should be paid that much, <laughs> but, <Why it's>, <laughs> but I think that's a big thing that, that coaches need to realize is, and I think more and more, um, we're understanding the importance of caregiving, you know, which is if we wanted to bucket with coaching is it's, it's caregiving, it's emotional support. So it's, so I, I came of the age of where it was kind of like, oh, you need all these online products and all of this stuff. But what, for me, I always think that people need to start with what is success for them? Like, how do you define success and your business model can stem from there. And that may change. Like when I, once I became a parent, I did not want to hustle anymore. (laughs) And I couldn't, you know, I was just like, I cannot hustle anymore. So my business model in the beginning was just one-on-one clients. Again, getting practice. Like you can't create, I think this big, I see these, I get targeted for these advertisements of like, create your signature program in six weeks. And it's like, no, if you really want to do, to innovate. And again, innovation is a mix of your synthesizing things. It doesn't, there's, we have this myth of the solo genius and that's just like, not true. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like all the tech bros think they've like, they've done all this stuff themselves. And it's like, well, the government invested billions of dollars in Silicon Valley in the eighties, you know? So it's just, yeah. no one does anything by themselves. So I just started off one-on-one and I started off in 2006 doing one-on-one stuff. And then once I left my corporate job, I was doing one on one. Now, eventually that will burn you out (laughs) and and it's hard to you hit a ceiling because you're trading hours for dollars. So then in 2010, I started my Truce with Food program Um, and it was like the minimal viable product of it, you know, and again, it was it was teaching people about kale and quinoa. And there was one piece of the emotional component. But as I finished grad school and I saw what um people who were early adopters of nutrition as medicine really needed, it really evolved into this group program that is now six months. Um, And so over time, my business model has become more about groups. I think there's this myth that people get um, because of our hyper individualism society. It's like, oh, there's more value in in working with people one-on-one and that can be true some people some of my clients are are famous and they don't want to be in a group and this is you know working on binging and stuff is is very like they don't want that out there i get that um but for the most part i really focus on groups because it 
people, there's so much shame and frustration around food and our health stuff. And when people are with other people, um, realizing other people like them are struggling, the healing is exponential. So now my business model has really evolved to a group program model where I run Truths with Food um, once a year. I often run this smaller program that is kind of like a tapas version of Truths with Food called Why Am I Eating This Now? That's shorter because six months, it's also $4,000. Um, so it's, it's nothing to you know, it's not going to be a whim of a decision usually. Right. Um, so I give people, a, it's called Why Am I Eating This Now? It's a live group program. And I actually didn't run it last year because I just didn't have the capacity. Um, but that would give me like, lead, you know, like it would give people a taste of the six smaller six week program of like, is this right for me? Is this work a right fit? Because I also don't believe sales. I don't do the scarcity mindset, all that kind of stuff. I want people to be like, no, I want to do this work. It's also, I do really deep work with people. So, you know, it's, it's not something that you can just like have people make a quick decision around. So I do that. Um, and then I still have private clients. I also have, again, back to relationship marketing. A lot of my clients have brought me in to um, speak at their companies and paid me money for that. So that's that's part of something that stopped, obviously, with COVID. And also I was pregnant <laughs> right before COVID. Um, and now I'm transitioning to also um, I've added my certification model. So I started a, a certification for people who want to learn this midwifery total totality of change, be mentored, have help. It's a year long program. And so now I'm starting to um, transition into that after 15 years of perfecting this, you know, process, but still iterating always. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's like a new component um, of my model. So, but it's mostly groups and um, people love it. Um, and it makes more money for the coach. Um, and it also is often tremendous value uh, to the clients, even faster. They can get further than even if they were to do it, work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Right, right. No, no. Thank you for giving us a glimpse into your- Yeah, yeah. How you generate, you know, your lifestyle. So I'm, I'm very thankful for, for that. It's always good to hear what coaches are doing just so that you know, when you go out, you, you go to I and you come out, you're like, what do I do this? And then, yeah. then you're just uh, unleashed to Instagram and they have 7,000. Oh, and you don't even need social media <laughs> until like you really want to scale. Like I don't even use social media and I feel my groups all the time. I mean, I like small groups. I price it higher, yeah. but I get like 15 to 20 people in my groups. And I, I do not rely on social media. I think people like, again, you build relationships and a big part of my model is going into other people's communities and teaching there. I just taught for um, a functional medicine company last Friday. I taught their 22 health coaches um, and got paid for it, you know, to also get, let people know about my certification. So I think that social media is like the last stop we need to go, but we often think it's the first start, yeah. but reaching out with people that you already have a relationships with to me is, is the key to, a coaching model. And the other thing I'll just say about business models is I think one of the things I really got clear on and it's been proven over and over again is like, what business do you actually want to be in? So when I was early on, I was getting solicited to have people like, well, you sell supplements, you know, multi-level marketing. And I'm like, that's actually the business of networking, right? I don't want to be in that. And I'm, there's like, you got to decide. I'm not saying either of these are right or wrong, but if you want to like sell a ton of courses for like nine 99 and be on social media, you're in the business of managing the algorithm. Right. So like, I really wanted to coach. So it's like, if I really want to coach <laughs> and I want to do as little marketing and sales as possible, or when I do do that, it's, it's a seamless, easy way. I want to get good at what I do. And I just want to develop relationships. And I want to only have to work with a handful of people a year to make a really good living, comfortable living. Awesome. Well, no, thanks for all these the shares today. It's been a really <laughs> enlightening show. You just added to our pre-show talk, which I just, I love that just as much as the show. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, fantastic. so listen, can you tell us where we can find you your programs obviously i you know you're doing the podcast route so i know that you are definitely getting some exposure to other audiences yeah yeah and um yeah where we can you know sign up for your programs social media handles website anything that we can do to keep up to all the good stuff that you're doing 
Yeah. Well, I think if health coaches are interested in coaching as a business model um, and are really interested in this, like, how do I become a midwifer, like a midwife of change so that you love your sessions and um, your clients love the results? I have a free um, webinar um, and it's about why smart goals don't work for eating and exercise goals. Um, new research is showing how these are and they're a change category all by themselves. So if people want that, they can go to Ali Shapiro dot com backslash smart goals. Um, and that's where you can watch that and the latest research on, um, you know, what do we really need to do to help people with this falling off the wagon issue? Because that's where you can charge <laughs> the most money and also give clients the most value. Um, and then if people, uh, I also have my website, Ali Shapiro.com and there's a huge work with me page there. So if people are interested working with me as a, like an individual or a, as my, in, in my certification, that's there. Then I have my own podcast insatiable. Um, and then I am on Instagram, but I'm not on there like all the time. I just go, like, I don't have like a strategy <laughs> because I don't need it. <laughs> I just go on there when I just did a whole hot take on the New York times, Ozempic food noise, you know, article. Um, so I'm at Ali, A-L-I-M Shapiro, S-H-A-P-I-R-O uh, on Instagram. Awesome. So thanks again so much for being on the show. You were fantastic. Yeah, and thank I'm you, Omar. To, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to hearing you and your actual health tips on this podcast, Burns Fat. Shortly, we're going to start to arrange that and get that going out there as well. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting summer and I'm very excited to connect with you. Yeah, you too, Omar. Thank you so much for having me. And this has been so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. All right. Have a great rest of the day. You too. Hope you enjoyed listening to today's episode of the Health Coach Academy podcast. If you did, jump over to iTunes and leave a rating and or review. It goes a long way in helping get this message out to our fellow health coaches and people in our industry. Also, if you can, jump over to my website, omarcumberbatch.com, where I give out a lot of freebies, including my five-day sugar challenge for people who are having issues with sugar. And also for health coaches, I have the book, Hidden. It's the six not-so-obvious ways to get your clients unstuck. Have a great day.